right, so welcome to the uh, Lockdown Podcast. Uh, this is uh, episode number 12, I think. It could be 12 or 13. I'm not really, I'm kind of keeping count, but not really. Uh, I know it's definitely been more than 10. So, uh, hey man, it's good to have you back for the second time. Second time around. Yes. Hopefully this time, you know, you don't delete yeah. me. Yeah, well, yes, I did delete. Um, it was unintentional. Um, uh-huh. I apologize. I thank you for coming back. No worries. No worries. Glad to be here. Yeah. So, um, so this is a, this is Luis Martinez. Uh, many of you guys uh, already know him. Uh, as as many of you guys know, this is a podcast. that's really meant for our church. Um, if uh, the people that are not part of our church that are watching, you are you are more than welcome um, to be a part of this. And if you're not part of any church, uh, you. Feel free to join us um, at our services. We have uh, 10 o'clock English, 11.30 for Spanish. This is Downey First Christian Church. This is Pastor Josh. And um, Luis Martinez, you've been a part of our church for a long time. Correct, yeah. So my kids grew up in this church. Um, we've been here for, I want to say, the better part of a long time, mm-hmm. of maybe 12, 15 years around there. Okay. I, yeah, we lost track. Okay. Yeah, so um, from my youngest all the way uh, to my eldest, 26. Mm-hmm. Seven next year, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so a very, very long time. Does it seem like it's been that long, or does it seem like it's been less time? You know what? It's no, it's, it's relatively really quickly. Mm. I mean, time passes really quickly. It's crazy. You know, our yeah. kids are. Uh, I think we had a discussion last time, but our kids, we see them as young toddlers, and then they start walking, and they start crawling. You know, crawling, walking, then church, and then they're out. College mm-hmm. and it's like wow, where the time has gone. You yeah, it's really really fast. So your oldest Kaylee is how old? She is. Uh, she just turned nineteen yesterday. Nineteen. 20, yeah, eleven twenty two. Yeah, and nineteen wow. years old. Yeah, she got her first job at Target, so she's all excited. Oh, oh really? Yeah, she's excited. When did she start? Um, she started last or Saturday this past Saturday. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. So she was uh, bummed out that she had to work yesterday for her birthday. I was like, hey, yeah, oh, that's life. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so my son Justin, uh, he's 17 and he works at Pizza Hut. Um, it's great. I, I love that they have jobs. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Because I think one of the things that, and I'm, we're going to sound old just by the way we're talking, but kids these days, right? As old people will say, kids these yeah. days, um, I think have trouble, Not, I would say in general, in general have trouble um, understanding the relationship between uh, work and uh and the uh, compensation, yeah. like things come really easy these Absolutely. days. Absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. Yep, and it's you know that's very very relevant when it comes to um, when you hand them over your debit card and they <laughs> go, "Hey, can you go do this for me?" Sure, and they come back with yeah. extra. I'm like, "Oh, that's <laughs> nice," you know. <laughs> so, yeah, but now it's gonna be. I assume now it's gonna be a lot different for her when mm. she gets her first paycheck. She's like, "Wait a minute." Um, why is why am I missing so much? Like hey, right, taxes. right. <laughs> why are they taking all my money? <laughs> yeah, it's true. They're gonna feel it. They're yeah, gonna feel yeah. it. Yeah, because yeah, I think from the kids' perspective, you you're talking about debit card. It's almost like from their perspective, it's just free money. You just put a plastic into this yeah. machine and it just spits out money. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you can buy whatever you want. It's like, well, you no, know, you no. know, it has to come from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they'll learn. Is she she uh, she's driving already, right? She is. Yeah. She, uh, this year has been very eventful for her. So she received her um, driver's license a few months back. So she's driving her car. Uh, now she has her, like I said, her job. And it's been an um, experience for her. You know, mm. she, she, but she seems to enjoy it. She likes the responsibility. She's one more, more responsible. That's good. My three kids. Yeah. That's so good. Pretty. Yeah. It, it's interesting, you know, how they grow and, yeah. Uh, but, but you know what? Um, trying to back all, Together, though, it's mm. uh, also interesting when you see them, they grow, but also grow part of a church. Yeah. It's a, it's a totally mm. different experience. Mm. You see it, you know, um, when we came to this church, we saw uh, kids grow up, but they come back to church. Mm. They'll join the choir or, you know, they, they sing for church. Or they do something. Yeah. And that's always nice to see. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's a blessing. Yeah. How do you see church these days? I mean, you've been part of our church, you said, between 12 and 15 years. How do you see church these days as it relates to in-person? I, I don't know if I'm phrasing the question right, but the, the, the point is, how do you see church these days as it relates to in-person, online? What is the experience about now? Because it seems like in the past or historically, it's been about the physical gathering in a specific location to worship together and i feel like church is sort of morphing into something that's not necessarily worse or better just different 
You know, um, things have changed, obviously, within the last two years. Mm. You know, um, we're going through, well, pandemic, all right? Um, now, I think it's based on the individual. Mm. So if the individual says, you know what, um, I I get the same at home, which I, I, personally, I don't agree. Mm. Uh, I'm more of a, you come to church, not necessarily to... Um, to a building, mm. you come to fellowship, you yeah. come to connect with people that are going through the same things you are in life. Mm. And sometimes you, you meet that one person that gives you a nugget that helps you during a tough time. Mm. Now, can you do that through a screen? Maybe, mm. you know, um, mm -hmm. who am I to say? Maybe you can, maybe you can't, yeah. you know, a lot of people through TV come to Christ, right? Yeah. But in order to grow, mm. um, you know, we have growth groups mm -hmm. for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. Because you get to you know, blade, steel sharp and steel, you know, so yeah. you, you have that thing that promotes you to want to take your relationship with God to yeah. another level. Yeah. Now, church doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to happen, mm. but it's a great place to interact. Now, these, like I said, these past two years, been challenging mm -hmm. the best way for me and my family has been to engage more mm. because when you do that the noise of the news is happening mm. you know oh th it's depressing when you come to church there's hope mm. you know there, there's always something that you take away and you go back home with yeah you know uh, yeah. this past sunday you know uh dangerous prayer you know yeah. and so it's you, you start thinking like well, you know what? It's true. Mm. There's nothing that you could hide from God. Mm. But when you come to church and you interact with people mm. and then people see that, you know, you may be going through something, you know, and you open up the doors to that room, you know, that mm. messy room, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They'd be like, don't worry about it. You know, it, yeah, you're going to have to struggle through some of this stuff. Yeah. But we're all doing it. And it yeah. just brings a little bit of a um, sense of not not a total sense of defeat you know you you know that's it's just sometimes we feel that mm. you know but when you meet somebody else that might be going through the same thing or, or something different yeah you realize like hey i'm not alone yeah you know? so yeah. I mean, that's very very too, for us it was very 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 helpful that's so true that you just said it i think that was so good because sometimes it's not even about getting the answer to the questions that you're asking immediately or getting like a quick fix to the thing that you're going through it's just interacting with someone and that person saying what you just said, you said it perfectly. You know what? Me too. Like I've been right. through that too. Just that. I remember I did, I was preaching a message on a Sunday and I can't remember exactly what the message was, but it was something to the effect of something that people were going through, something that they were struggling with. And I just said, how many people go through this? Just raise your hand if this is something that you go through. And then, you know, a few people raise your hands and I asked the people that raise their hand, just kind of look around, look at the hands that are up. You know, I mean, and just the just being able to look around the room and say, man, I'm not alone in this. Right. That makes a huge deal. Absolutely. And I don't know if that can be replicated remotely. That's what I'm saying. So, you yeah. know, just because you're home, you, I mean, you, you feel it. But then there's something that stuck with me for a while now that you said. It's like, hey, you know what? Um, we go through life um, and we're always putting that guilt trip mm. on us, mm. you know, like, oh man, you know what, today I was so busy, I forgot to pray like I normally pray, or I forgot to go into the word of God mm. like I normally do. Yeah. And then you feel that it's okay to feel conviction in your heart. You're like, oh man, yeah. you know, I, no, I can, you know, I'm better than this. I yeah, can, yeah, I can yeah. do this, right? Mm. But it's, what I took from last time was, you know, don't feel guilty about it don't feel like oh you know what um i have to do this in order to when you put when you put that in order to please god then you're wrong at the yeah start. you know the, you know you're never gonna it's, it's not about pleasing god right it's about trying to the way i see it is either walk behind his steps or align yourself with god yeah and if you do that you're well on your way to just feeling that sense of, you know, not a sense of like accomplishment. Like, oh yeah, you know what? I accomplished this. No, a sense of like a, a humbleness, you know, like oh, I'm following him. And it's that, it's, 
a peace that comes over you from yeah. that. And it, that, that's what you're not necessarily after, but that's what you want in your life. You yeah. want that peace. Like, you know what? Um, there's nothing I could do mm. to please God because mm. it was, you know, it was paid for a long time ago. Right. So there's, uh, there's nothing you could do. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah. That's so good. It's so true. It's so true because I think that we can so easily get caught into this. I think we naturally fall into this pattern of trying to please God, you know, trying to please God when he, like you said, is fully pleased in his son. He, his son, Absolutely. Jesus, in his death and resurrection, you know, on the cross, tete, let's yep. die, right? It yep. is finished. Um, he satisfied everything. So God looks at us through Jesus, through his son. So he sees us perfect. So there's nothing that we can do to compensate, to make better, to for God to love us more, for, for God to love us less. He loves us completely just the way we are. And not even, because I think one of, I heard a pastor once say this. He said, God is not waiting for a better version of yourself in order to love you completely. Absolutely. Isn't that a great yeah, phrase? Yeah. Because I think that's, and so we can have peace. You said it, peace. And it's okay. the thing that we ultimately seek. And we have that in Jesus. Absolutely. You know, but this world um, is competing. You mm. know, it's competing for your attention. Every single time you step out the door, it, 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 that's what it's doing. Right. You know, and if, everything that you need in life, God will provide for, mm. you know, um, one of the things that, um, this world's very good at is confusion is confusing you mm. with that. It will tell you, you need this mm. in order to like yourself better. Right. You know, um, and that's a very, very powerful tool that this world has mm. against you. Mm. And if you let it, you know, you, that just brews so much of brews envy, mm. you know, uh, jealousy, hate to some degree, yeah. you know, it's like a dislike for this person. But you know what? Th there's one thing that you also said where it says, you know, everybody has to look happy on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Everybody has mm -hmm. to look happy, you know, like, oh, look, because it's all shiny. Yeah, right? yeah. But, you know, um, there's some moments where. I'm out with my wife and we're looking at people and they're taking pictures of it. It's fine. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, that's great. Yeah. But to me, I get, I'm curious by nature. I like to see what they do after the picture. So they, they big old smile, you know, and then they go back. To I've noticed picture. that. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yeah. I've noticed the same thing. It's, yeah. it's almost ridiculous. Like it's, I don't want to say ridiculous, but it's kind of like absurd. Yeah. Like there's a smile. Yeah. They're like, like, okay, right back to it. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you know, and I tell my wife, uh, I say, look, there, there's a reason why when you're taking a picture, mm. you know, people say, say cheese. Cause right. it, you know, cheese, you know, you, you have to force that. Right. Smile. right. Nobody says like, you know, bounce on like, uh, you know, like, say no. You know? Right. 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 <laughs> so, you know, it, it's, um, as long as we don't confuse what this world is trying to mm. impose on us saying, Hey, you know what, in order for you to be happy, you need this. Yeah. In order for you to be successful, you got to do this. Yeah. You know, um, success to me is <clears throat> raising, kids that to some degree um retain themselves in this world but also a huge plus and it's i say a plus because it's difficult is for them to always have a a heart that belongs to god mm. if you do that um no matter where you're at in life you're you're going to be a very very successful person mm. you know when, when your kids decide in their hearts hey, you know what um I don't have to go to church. Mm. I'm an adult, but they say, I want to go to church because I have a relationship with my God and yeah. not a relationship that my parents have. Right. Um, you know, that's, that's great for them, but a relationship that I have yeah. for God. Yeah. When, when you see that, and that is, to yeah. me, that's, that's, that's the meaning of success. That's really interesting that you said that. And it makes me think about the transition that we're in now as a church. Well, we've been in several transitions. I've been a pastor here for two and a half years almost. And it seems like everything's been transitioned. Like one, from one yeah. thing to the next, it's like it's never stopping. But anyway, there's a transition that we're in right now, specifically with, um, with our uh, student ministry director. Mm -hmm. And so Francis, uh, he's going he's gonna to take another job at another church. Um, and we're super happy for him. Absolutely. Super happy for him. Love Francis. It's that a, guy. it's a tremendous loss for us, but it's a gain for the church that he's going to. But one of the things that we're, we're asking ourselves now is as we transition from him to the next person and we're, we're, you know, we've been conducting interviews, et cetera, to be able to find the right person. 
is what's the definition of, of success in the sense of for these kids? And I think that you nailed it because that's exactly what I've been thinking about is that you want for the faith of these kids to not be an inherited faith from their parents. Mm -hmm. We want to have what I call a, for them to have a personal revelation of Jesus. Yep. Right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, again, you know, um, if we as a church for our youth can provide that, you know, um, the, before encounter used to be um the burn you yeah. Know, yeah yeah and it was it was crazy you know and one of the things that always caught my eye was the back of their shirt saying you know um the whole world i forget quote by quote what is it pretty much saying hey if you set yourself on fire the whole world you know, come see right oh and, wow and it's like you know and when you have that when you have um someone that or you have our youth that are on fire for god mm. it I think that it promotes that in their own family too, because if, so for example, you know, the negativity of this world is you see your kids and now they're hanging out with the wrong crowd. Like, Oh my gosh. And everybody sees it like, Hey, your kids are doing this, man. Mm. Your kids, you know what you have to in your household. If you, if you're not going to church, but your kids are going to church and they want to get baptized, they come back. And now you have this kid that, you know, is, somehow different mm. you quite know how to, like what's going on it's infectious you know you see like yeah. what's going on what's, yeah. what's happening you know uh nothing has changed for that kid in that household mm. but something has changed internally yeah and when when you see that i mean it's evident yeah you know, it's evident that something is changing there yeah that's something we all know what it is here in church right but it brings out i think the curiosity also in their parents yeah for sure yeah for yeah. sure so it, yeah. it's uh yeah that's, that's what we need we need our youth to be on fire. Yes. You know, yes. That's, that's good. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to jump into another topic right now, if that's okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't tell, I didn't tell you we were going to talk about this, but I'm going to just kind of mention this. Uh, many people, many people know you've seen the, 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 uh, the little ballots on Sundays. Um, Luis Martinez is, uh, is being proposed to be one of our elders, uh, in our church. And, uh, I want to know, uh, how you feel about this. Um, I want to ask you, um, I want to first of all thank you for for saying yes to to this possibility. Uh, I'm super uh, honored that you've that you've taken this on, and I'm super excited to working with you. Very excited to working with Absolutely. you. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm, you know, I'm the honored one. It, it's just it's an honor just to be considered mm -hmm. first off, but it's also very scary. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we talked about this. Yeah, it's it, 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 you know what in my heart, um, you know, we, we talked about that that messy room right mm. so <clears throat> yeah you know nobody's perfect mm -hmm. except for one and when something that was when we talked about that i was like oh man you know it's like the last thing i want to do is give a bad impression mm. of god mm. me take take shots at me i don't care you know yeah. but when it, you know, because I'm like, oh yeah, you saw me do that. Yeah, probably true. You know, <laughs> yeah, you know, it was traffic. Sorry, you know. <laughs> so, but when, you know, when we're dealing with someone that is deeply rooted in my heart, mm. like Christ, I don't want to give a bad representation of Him because of my actions. Because I'm not perfect, mm. and I'm only trying to follow christ's footsteps mm. sometimes you know as i'm doing that on the sand that i'm trying to follow jesus in front of me i see other footsteps and i stray i'm like oh man mm. hey, rush back over here like, oh, i'm sorry lord you know <laughs> so you know but so when, when you said something like that to me i was like i said you know let me pray on it because it's it's scary mm. um i don't ever want to it was a struggle yeah but i remember one of the as i'm praying God just spoke to my heart and he said, you know what? Um, it's not about you. Mm. It's about me. And as long as you pray mm. for everything that whatever comes during that time, yeah. if you pray, you know, um, collectively as a group, you know, I'm there in the midst of you. Yeah. So I'll guide you guys. I'll say, okay. You yeah. Know? And that sealed the deal for me. It's like, hey, Lord, you know, as long as it's you, mm -hmm. but I'm fine. Yeah. You know, and I even prayed. I said, Lord, you know what? Uh, even, you know, maybe they made a mistake. And if, if at the very end you said, you know what, you're not ready. And they mm. say, put another name. I'll be like, 
Amen. You know, yeah. and I'll pray for that person. You know, I said, no hard feelings, Lord. I'm like, oh, no, Lord, you took me out. No, no. Yeah. I said, you know, because to me it's an honor. Um, and if you were to say, no, it's not your time, I'm okay. And you put that person, I'll yeah. pray for that person. Yeah. You know, I, I'm not, Lord knows I'm not trying to push my way. Into, oh, yeah. No, no, no. It, yeah. It's all about God. Yeah. And, th- and that's one of the things that we look for. You know, I mean, if, if you were a guy that was saying, yeah, I could totally do this. Like this is, yeah, I mean, this is going to be a piece of cake. Like I would be, that would be a red flag, you know, mm-hmm. because you, you, it's a good sign when you're overwhelmed by the responsibility that the task mm-hmm. entails. Um, it's a good thing. And I, I, I know what you feel because I feel that every single Sunday before I'm going to preach, it's almost like, God, you know what? I, I just feel like you got the wrong guy, <laughs> you know? And so and then I, I was sharing that with a pastor one day and he's like, that's a good thing. It's a good thing because the moment you feel qualified, that's the moment when you're probably the least qualified. Yeah. Because you want for, like the Apostle Paul said, for for your strength to be uh, made known through your weakness. Yeah. Like as you're weak, then you're strong. Absolutely. Because you cre- that that weakness creates space for God. That's what you're doing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and uh, and also, I probably use this illustration way too many times in church, um, but I use the 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 illustration of the of the stained glass, the broken glass. And then how that broken glass is 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 pieced back together and stuck yep. back together, and how that's what Christ did with us. Like we're broken, and He brings us back together. But we shouldn't hide those cracks, because when the light of Christ shines through those, it makes it even more beautiful. And so that's what we want to do too in our lives. We don't want to like present ourselves like we're all together and perfect. You, you know, the light of Christ shines um, better when we admit like I'm broken, dude. Like I'm work. I'm a work in progress. Absolutely. Yep. I mean, you say that, and, you know, you have used that illustration. I love it. For me, that's how I kind of came to Christ, you know. Um, I don't want to choke up here, so I'm look down. Because You're good. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> it, you know what? It was just one. It was the mm. darkest time in my life. Mm. And, um, you know, as I'm there, you know, through the radio shoots off a message and it says, you know what? I said, the Lord knows what he's doing he mm. think of it this way he said you know it's an alley it's a dark alley yeah he's with his little shopping cart he's passing through a whole bunch of trash can bins and he sees you he picks you up and he goes looks at you he goes i could use this still and he puts and to me that that drove me home you know, mm. i was like oh you know when i heard that i said lord you realize that you went through all these trash can bins and you actually dug around and you said i you know i yeah. So when you use that, I was like, yeah, it hits yeah. home. I was like, that's just, it's, it's, uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah. That's exactly what he does. You know, he, when you're proud, mm. he, he can't use you when you're proud. No. When you're broken and you like, yeah. what do you have to offer the right. King of Kings? You know, what, what can you possibly offer right. the King of Kings? What, nothing. There's nothing you can offer him. That's right. At that part, you know, me, I'm like, Lord, if you could use me, that's, that's yeah. on you if you use me. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you'll, you'll make it. You'll make it work. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah. I'll just do what I need to do, but you just guide the way. I'll do it. Yeah. You know. So, well, the other thing that's really good and, and gives me a lot of confidence uh, in you is that um, all you've done for the past thirteen, fifteen years has been serve in the church. Like you've served. You've served. You've done different things. I've, I see you with the wires, with the computer, with the software. I mean, yesterday you spent. It was a full day of work. Like you left, you were here, I think before I got here and you left after I left. Like you spent the entire day here, you and Johan just working. You yeah. Know? You know, it, 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 um, the way I see it is, um, I, I think I shared this, this with you as well. I said, you know what, um, it hit me a while back too with that and said, how is it that my house is in order when the house of the Lord still needs a little work here and there? Mm. I just, you know, I'm like, it's, it's always, it's always a privilege to work, mm. you know, for God. Mm. If you're going to have a boss in life, you want it to be God because yeah. he doesn't compensate you like with the, don't look for that. Right. You know, just when you're working, 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 you know, the Lord's there with you. Like, Hey, what are you doing? Yeah. It's just conversations you have, you know, I, I can't explain it. It's like that. But also, he puts people like Johan, mm. like Hugo, uh, Daza. I think yeah, Daza, Daza. Yeah, you know, uh, in your life. Yeah, and it's great because you work with people, and you're doing 
a job mm. for the church, but you're doing it together. Yeah. And then you're having a great time. Yeah. You know, so yeah. when you say, oh, you're here. But it's great. Me, me and Ohan yesterday were cracking jokes. He knows I'm going blind. He, <laughs> you know, he knows I'm going blind. But he goes, hey, can you read this for me? <laughs> so, yeah, we're having a great time. Oh. You know, it, it was a blessing. Um, That's so great. Do you yeah. wear glasses? I don't remember. Do you wear? We're reading glasses. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen you with glasses. Have I? You I don't never think I've seen will you with glasses see on. Reading glasses. What's that? Yeah, you never will see. No. You. <laughs> Why are you embarrassed with your glasses? Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, I got the the Costco ones. You know the kind oh of okay vocals. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, they call them progressives now because it sounds more. Uh, it sounds yeah it nicer. Sounds, but it sounds you, nicer. You still just can't read. You know, oh like, man! But whenever you see me up close, you know, like oh, or doing this. Oh, that's me. I do that all the time. I yeah. can't. I can, like if I'm reading down here and the, and the letters are small, I'm like, forget it. It's just a big blur, especially in the morning. You wake up oh, in the morning know, and right? it's like, dude, I can't see anything. I know, I'm I like, know, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. the worst. It is, you know. But um, yeah, I do. But you know, like, I just need to get some better glasses on. Yeah, I'd be like cool, like you. I like yours. Oh, I wear. Yeah. Them. I don't wear them that often though. I wear them when I'm reading. I thought it was. I thought when I bought these, like, I'm gonna wear these all the time. I just keep them on all the time. But then I, I, I didn't. I couldn't get used to them. You know. I mean, because I can see, like, when I look down. I can see really clear, but when I look forward, I feel like I need to take them off and then I can see better because it's right different. On. So either I need to get them worked on or, you know, uh, I mean, sorry, either, either, um, I need to, I think, get a different pair of glasses or just use them like I do right, just right. on and off. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. You know, I mean, but that's good though. Cause you know, it tells me that you you know, you're burning your eyesight reading the word of God. That's exactly. Yeah, the word there you go. There yep, you go. Yep. Yep. No, yeah. Definitely. Makes but, me look smarter too. That's why I'm growing the beard too. Maybe I'll, yeah, well, I'll, get, I'll get more respect. It's reverse. I think that's why you deleted it. Or, no, you didn't, well, no, we're going to call it delete. I think that's why you lost my last uh, uh, podcast because oh, I had a man. full beard. You see, he he still won't forgive me for that. No. He still no. won't forgive me for that. But you were growing it, and then you quit. I did. You know? I wanted to catch up with you, and then all of a sudden I got this big old, you know, not a big old beard, but I'm growing it, and then he shows up with like a clean shave. I'm like, yeah, I thought like, we were going to be beard buddies. I know, right? No. I, you know what? Give me a couple of days. I'll, I'll grow it again. Okay. No, I'm done with that. Yeah. I, I couldn't sleep, man. I was like, no. Yeah. I'm at that stage where it's like really itchy. Oh, yeah. You know? Two so weeks, you'll be done. Well, I want to push past it and see what happens. Yeah. Because I've never really had a beard, like a full beard. I want to just try it out. Do it, man. I think I might do it. Yeah, you know, I think I might do it for do a year. It. Yeah, oh. a year. That's a long time. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Maybe I'll do it for like six months. There you go. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? Um, Anything else on your mind? You know, um, yeah, there's a, um, so I know that every Sunday you say that one of the things that you just mentioned was when you feel qualified, you're the least qualified. Mm. Now, mm. your messages have always, and everybody, I feel like I can speak for a good number of people here. Everybody agrees that the messages that are coming to us on Sunday, they're just, they're felt. Mm. You know, um, when people feel a message in their heart, whether it's a good message that makes you feel like, oh, yeah, you know, mm. amen, or the one that convicts you, mm. they're both equally received with an open heart mm. you know because that's when you know that the lord is speaking through you and that's what you always said to hey you know what best the lord just speak through me, yeah right get your word out to your people and you know i feel that as long as that that's your heart and you keep pushing in that direction and you keep bringing the word of god i think our church is going to flourish I think we, we spoke about this last time too yeah you know, it's going to flourish you know um it's, it's and we understand that it's not about numbers mm. now when it comes to numbers numbers for christ yes absolutely yeah you know people coming in here giving their lives to christ mm. and having them you know receive a message leave this building go home let it still tick in their hearts and mm. say something brought back something i don't understand it and that curiosity just plants a seed mm. for the word of God to just expand. And that's when, that's when you have people, you know, returning back to church mm. and coming back here. It's not necessarily a thing of like, you know, a feel good message, mm. which again, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But a message that convicts you, 
it's also a, a feel good message because mm. it convicts you for a reason. Yeah. It convicts you for whatever is missing in your life that you don't quite understand. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, um, it's a blessing to receive, mm. you know, um, again, going back to, you know, I'm not beating down on Facebook or Instagram or anything like that, but some of these, some of these images, videos on there, you know, you show a huge house and people would, you know, all this, nothing wrong with that, mm. but I've yet to see, you know, a happy setting like that. Whereas you see, um, if you ever go visit, you know, I mean, you, you grew up in Chile, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, my family's from El, El Salvador mm. now seeing their, uh, some of the pictures that we see, uh, from people have taken in the past, you see their settings a little humble home, yeah. but everybody's united there. I mean, it's just, mm. it's like, wow, this is, this is great, right? This is, yeah. this is so fantastic. You know, it, it, it's, they're sharing a meal. They're doing all kinds of stuff, um, you know, united in yeah. there, you know, and it, it's, it's, it's a great, great thing to see, mm. you know, I don't, and again, I, I don't think that um, in your messages, what you do is, you bring the word of God, it convicts the person, or it kind of maybe um, kind of notifies them. Hey, you know what? What about this in your life? Mm. You know, uh, like this past Sunday was about that one room. And you're absolutely right. There isn't anything that God is going to be be surprised. Oh my God, right. I can't believe there's nothing. That, yeah. you know, he's not going to go in the room. <gasps> you're not going to make him gasp. Right, you know? right. You're, he's going to be like, yeah, you're going to be like, this is what I mean. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Just bring it out, you know? <laughs> yeah. That way you can start, like what you said, the healing. Yeah. When you start the healing, that's, that's, it's imperative. Yeah. Um, you don't want to carry the, carry that luggage around. No. You, you know? You don't. When you, when you do that, that's just, that's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. You know? And yeah. that's what we need in church. We need messages just like that, that mm. promotes healing, mm. promotes uh, unities, promotes something that you know most of us go through if you're angry at somebody you know Bible talks about it. if you're angry at somebody you know, don't, don't pray go make yourself right with that person yeah then come back to god yeah christ right uh and, and that's the same thing here you know if you're angry at a friend if you're angry at a family member you know you're having some you know hey sometimes you have to be the bigger person yeah or you have to be put your head down and say yeah, i'm sorry yeah you know, whatever i did you know and i think that your messages encompass that you know mm. they say hey you know what there's if there if god knows everything about you mm. he knows that too you know mm. he knows that whatever may be troubling you he provides you that example that opportunity to yeah. make yourself whole you know so yeah you have that peace yeah yeah absolutely so good good well it's a joy man it's a joy it's a joy to preach uh, every sunday you know I, I look forward to it i look forward to it. it's a combination of looking forward to it and also being scared to death because, yeah. because, you know, um, you're dealing with the word of God, man, and you want to do it right. But at the same time, there's grace for all the shortcomings along the way. So, so yeah, man, I appreciate the I appreciate the encouragement. Um, yeah. Well, I think we're good. Yep. It's a good conversation. Very good conversation. All right, you guys. I'll see you next time. Yeah, take care, guys.